Hi everyone, welcome back to the Get A Breed channel. So today we're in sunny Morecambe. Um, we brought the rain with us from Ireland. So we're over visiting Mike Dent at Accidental Brewery. Mike has put a Brewix brew house in here. So nice cobbled uh, street, little alleyway leading up to what would best be described as a bit of a tortoise in the sense that behind this door, you'll see you wouldn't expect a brewery to be there. Morecambe is a fishing village and um, would have a lot of history in relation to that. It's become a bit of a tourist attraction. It's an up and coming type of area. So it's really great to see a craft brewery popping up here and Mike and his family investing in turning things around the craft beer scene here. So he has a bar in Lancaster and the beer's brewed on site here and then sold through the bar in Lancaster. Also does packaged um, canned beer as well. So let's go in and check this out. It's an old um, fishing unit that he's bought and repurposed into a brewery. Whenever we came in here this morning, door opened, wasn't sure what to expect. Seeing the familiar Getter Brewed boxes and the crisp malt bags and that poly keg on the left. Mike tells us his son's um, left this car to fix it here, won't be here for long. <laughs> um, and then behind this door is where the TARDIS appears, where the brewery appears, where you can see the action. So let's check it out. Okay, so we're in the Accidental Brewery and you can see he's got a beautiful setup. Um, nice oak barrels for experimentation going on over here. Little two head can filler. And then we have a raised area with the drainage put in to home the Brewix 500 and three CCT 50 Brewix fermenters. So the fermenters have had a few upgrades and extras added at Mike's request. Um, yeah. Probably something to cover is the difficulty that they've had getting the kit in here. So because Brewix is on wheels, um, obviously made things that little bit easier. And then the fact that this used to be old, an old fishing um, unit, there's little um, points to attach winches and also to allow them to just maneuver the equipment effectively and efficiently in. Okay, so setup is Brewix 500 and Loiterton Brewix, as you know from seeing previous videos, every vessel works on a dual purpose. So the, the Brewix 500, the kettle, is the mash ton. It also has the counterflow chiller built into the walls. And then the Loiterton, which is here, is the Loiterton and also the Whirlpool. So every vessel has a dual purpose. And um, you can see the fermentation vessels here um, being equipped with dry hopping ports in the lids. Um, it's got the pressure release valve, um, spundling valves, and then pigtail sampling taps, um, temperature control here, graduation marks here, and then Mike has had um, carbonation stones added to these tanks here, and also you can see um, the DIN fittings on the bottom to allow everything to be stripped off and cleaned really easily. This was delivered in Christmas 2020, probably the worst time ever. Brexit happening, transport crisis. So the delivery driver actually got to spend his Christmas in a car park in uh, Dover of all places. It was delivered on Christmas Eve, we believe. So nice early Christmas present for Mike. This is Mike behind me and we're gonna mic Mike up in a minute and have a chat with him. But uh, to give you an idea of where the breweries came from, so Accidental Brewery started off on this system. Um, Swiss um, brew house, 140 liter capacity. Um, using the SS Brewtech fermenters. So you can see that Mike's taken a big jump from 140 liters to 500 liters. And at the moment is brewing one per week and selling the beer out through his own bar in Lancaster. Mike's obviously trying to keep uh, his customers excited with new and exciting beer. And obviously brewers being brewers want to experiment with traditional methods. And he's brewing a range of specials in the oak here, which is lovely to see. Um, looking forward to doing some more of this stuff myself in the near future. So you can see um, it's a relatively small scale output, but um, if you're selling direct to the end consumer in your own bar, profit margins are going to be good, revenue is going to be good, and it's a nice, effective business. So manual canning. Um, 
labor intensive but effective. Two head filler. You can, it's great to see that Mike is actually using cold store for storing his beer in. So it's great to see he cares about the quality of his beer, so he wants to keep it cold stored. So you can see he's using poly kegs uh, for dispensing in his own bar, and then obviously has the um, packaged cans for online sales as well. Um, nice selection of beers. He's telling me that a lot of people like the funky sort of hazy hop forward style beers. Huck the face. So you can see what he did there. <laughs> so let's get a chat with Mike and hear what he has to tell us about Accidental Brewery. Mike, thanks for having us today. So normally whenever we do a brew X install, as soon as the kit arrives, we'd be there to do a, a, a brew on the initial day. But thanks to COVID and all sorts of things, it's been slightly delayed. Tell us a little bit about Accidental Brewery. Yeah, so um, I started home brewing um, about 2015, something like that. Have a, but we had a, have a business in Lancaster doing something totally different and uh, a space became available in that building. So because of my interest in, in brewing and things, we, we decided um, we'd take the plunge and kind of open up a, a bar and a brewery upstairs. Yeah. Uh, so it kind of came about by accident, that's kind of where the name came from. So that was um, mid-2018, uh, we have a bar and a brewery. The brewery itself, which is, is this equipment yeah. here, the small kit and these tanks, that was actually located behind the bar, so it was on view. Okay. So the customers could drink the beer and they could see where it was made yeah. and where I brewed it. Um, so we kind of grew out of this kit um, and um, we, we came across Brewix and yourselves and, and kind of that's where we're at now really. We, we moved to this bigger building. Um, that was towards the end of uh, last year. Yeah. Um, and then we got the kit and started brewing I think in February. So you, you actually, I remember whenever you first got in contact, you've got quite a good accolade. You were the you were like the highest and untapped yeah, at that time. Something like the first or second highest rated brewer on, on untapped. Yeah. You have to have a thousand ratings to uh, to get on there. Yeah. So that, that that took us probably brewing on, on this kit that took in our own bar, that took us like eighteen months or so. Okay. And then I think just before COVID came around we'd we'd hit that one thousand and then we'd sort of jumped into untapped right at the top. Um, so yeah, that was that was good. It's nice. To, it's nice to scratch the ego and all that yeah. there. But it, like, it's also good to make good liquid. So, uh, moving on to liquid, what type of beers do you like to make? Yeah, so um, I like to make all sorts. I like drinking all sorts of beers. So uh, I just make the beers that I like drinking. Uh, luckily, our customers like those sort of beers. So hazy IPAs, very popular. Um, pale pale beers, table beers, also very popular for you know drinking pints of. Um, we do we do some stouts as well, saisons, um, and I've also started putting things in the barrels as well. Yeah, I love that type of stuff because that's um, I'd like to make more time for that myself. Yeah. Um, so look, I know people watch the channel and they want to know more about opening their own brewery, and they're they're looking at options, and we're trying to build content for that. You passed comment earlier that you know you're the delivery driver, you're the brewer, you're social media. Um, are you getting a revenue for you and your family out of this? <laughs> Great question. I think yeah, if you've got if you've got your own bar and your own outlet for the beer, then you know you you can make a, a living out of it. Certainly, yes. It's a bit tougher if you haven't got that, and you're just maybe doing cans and small pack things like that, or trying to deliver kegs to to, to other bars. Yeah. Um, it's probably tougher. But if you can if you can get your own uh, outlet as well. Uh, then yeah, it's, uh, it, it can be great, yeah. He has the bar and the licensing laws in the mainland UK here allow him to sell direct and open up a bar. We need that to happen in Ireland, but um, hopefully it'll happen in due course. But um, you can see how this model works here. It's probably the best way of putting it. So, um, and in terms of hours that you're inputting into the business, what are you doing in a week? I'm probably here at the brewery um, most, most days. Um, possibly not Friday and Saturday and sometimes have Sunday off if I'm lucky but I'm, I'm either here or at the bar serving the beer as well. We get people from, from all over, we've got, uh, we've got a good name in, in Lancaster and further afield so we get people travelling up, now they can travel again. We're getting people coming up from, uh, from Manchester on the train and things for the day 
uh, and they'll come to our place and go through our beers, you know. How, how have you found using the Brewix kit? Yeah, it's been, it's been good. Um, I, I, as you said, I didn't really have any training at the, at the start on it because we, you couldn't get across. Um, but I, I think I soon picked it up and um, it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's almost, it is plug and, plug and brew, you know. Um, connect the hoses up, make sure you've got the power and the water uh, and you're away really, yeah. And, and I like the fact it's on wheels. Um, just to be able to move things about to clean is really great, you know. I wouldn't have been able to do that with, with a more traditional brewery. That's one of the reasons I went for Brewix and you guys because of that support. You know, I was looking at equipment from China and other places. Um, whilst it maybe looked good on paper, um, you just never know what you're going to get at the end of the day and yeah. the support's not there, whereas with you guys, you know, and Brewix, you know you've got that, yeah. which is great. Mike, thanks for today. Thanks for letting us into the brewery. No thanks problem. for showing us around and yeah. for the hospitality. And thanks for coming across, guys. It's, uh, it's been great, yeah. That's Accidental Brewery. Um, you're going to get to know Mike a little bit better. You're going to get to see his bar in Lancaster. You're going to get to see the beers that he's making, and we hope that you check them out and buy some online. Um, this model is perfect for this type of customer. So. Brewix 500 in a building that probably wasn't designed to be a brewery. It's effective, it's easy to get into place. Mike's used premium quality Brewix here to allow him to have a brewery that delivers consistent high quality beer. So it allows him to hit production targets to create a revenue and an income that looks after him and his family. So that's everything for today at Accidental Brewery. Be sure to check them out in the links that we've posted below. And until next time, happy brewing.